classroom in A10. Keegan Cogan here again talking about immigration. Um, we're going to talk about, we're going to briefly go over our, um, immigrants coming to the United States, push pulls, but our big, our key thing here that we're talking about today is adapting. Yep. Um, if you're a fan of Hamilton, there's that great line in Hamilton, immigrants, we get the job done. And that kind of like, is my jumping off point into the immigration unit because like all the stuff they actually do accomplish when they get here. But boy, are they gonna be faced with some difficult times. Oh yeah, oh yeah, unfortunately. Um, so when we talk about why immigrants are coming here, we, we talked about the push-pull factors, things that were pushing them out of their country. Um, food was scarce, farmland was scarce, poverty. Persecution. Not, persecution, not enough economic opportunity. Um, the pull factors, you know, the United States has always been considered like a magnet, so we attract people because we have jobs, opportunities, freedoms, the New York Yankees, um, free land out west. <laughs> so these are some of the things that we're, we're getting into when we look at the push-pull factors. We talked about the receiving stations, uh, Ellis Island, if you ever get this wrong on a test, we are definitely gonna come to your house and uh, haunt you, that's mm -hmm. what we'll say. Ellis Island receiving stations in New York, uh, most of the people who are coming over from Europe. Angel Island, West Coast, California, a lot of the immigrants who were going through there um, were from Asian countries such as China. So this is what we're gonna get into today. You know, they're actually coming off the boat um, after probably riding in steerage, which was about like, what, 30 bucks, I think we found out yeah. how much they paid for it. You know, and the conditions in that in steerage were, you know, less than desirable, to say the least. Right, and when we talk about going through this process, you know, you made that comparison to how it was like the Middle Passage with uh, yeah. slaves. You know, I find like, like my, I'm drawn to this guy. Like, two suitcases, hat, coat, slacks, you know, his whole life is in, are in those in two that, bags. In that bag. You know, probably doesn't speak English. Yep, like you know, a lot of them Coming do. to a land where he may, may, know, may have family here, may not, you know, and he's gonna try to make, make his way. And when, when you're looking at places that you may go to where people might be encountering language barriers, those places now are kind of prepared for that. Mm -hmm. You know, you probably have somebody on your staff who could speak French, Italian, Arabic, whatever the case may be, Spanish. Um, during this time period, um, as your family knows, they, they were really um, insensitive. So now they're coming up here, and again, this is know. where in class we would show the clip from The Godfather. Oh gosh! Where yeah. where these guys are like, "Do you speak English?" Exactly. No. Uh, yeah. Right. It's... And you, since we're going to getting into the name changing, and here's why, I think this picture does a great job of it. You have all these people that have to be processed. Mm -hmm. Um, you have to get their names in, you have to write them down. Of course, a lot of them were traveling in close proximity to other passengers, which meant you probably, you may have caught something along the way. So, you know, when you talk about writing these names down and, and you know, what happens to your name? Yeah. Because these people did not have the patience. These no, the no, they did not. So, a uh, couple of years ago, I had surgery on my knee. And while I was out from teaching, I joined Ancestry.com. You know, and did a lot of research into my family, and I found out that Must my have been a slow Netflix. Yeah, <laughs> that, that my name Kogan, Irish, is actually Hilgen, Hilgen, and William Kilgan came to America during the famine, eighteen fifties. You know, um, and at some point, this is way before Ellis Island, but at sure. some point, someone's like, "Hey, what's your name?" He's like, "Oh, my name is William Kogan," and it's like. All right, how do you spell that? I have no idea. I can't read. <laughs> I'm Irish, you know, I, I phone potatoes. You know, it's like, all right, Kogan, C-O-G-A-N, and that became my family's name. And, and you, you see how an immigration officer who's working probably 12 hours yep. shifts, how you, oh, whatever, just, uh, yeah. I'm going to write phonetically how it sounds. And if you think of a lot of Italian names, yeah. you know, have a lot of letters in their last name. A lot of pals. You know, it's like, hey, what's your name? Oh, my name's Giovanni Cazzolato. Right. right, your name's George, you know, Johnson, right. like yeah, you have the language barrier, mm -hmm. the accent. Uh, I mean, too much to get through, and, and this is what happened to a, quite yep. a few family names. Um, so now they've arrived. You know, the land of opportunity for all those push pull factors. Um, it's definitely if you've uh, ever been towards Battery Park um, or on the cruise that kind of goes around Circle there, Line. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is really something to see when we're talking about the Statue of Liberty how they may have seen it because of the wear and tear. And it almost makes you understand why you know, stories go back home that American streets were paved in gold. Right. Because Lady Liberty originally looked golden. Yeah. You know, she's made out of 
bron- bronze or co- copper? Copper. It's copper, made out She'll of copper. She'll always be golden to me. Yes, you know, <laughs> and, and the years, the 100 year plus of being oxidized by the saltwater air of New York Harbor, this isn't a science class oxidation. Yeah, it's good on with me. But that's what turned her green. It's, well, it's a good thing you brought that up because we're going to be covering some big boy, big girl. Oh, yeah, we are. Uh, so, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your, tenement, your teeming shores, excuse me, I should put my glasses on, sending these, the homeless, tempest, tempest awesome toast to me. me, I lift my lamp beside the golden door, I'm surprised you don't have it memorized. Um, this was, where is this located on her again? It is at the pedestal. pedestal it's right. somewhere down at the pedestal. Yep. Um, I've actually never been there. I, sh- ashamed to admit that, growing up in New York, my entire life, I've, I've been to New York City at least 2,000 times. I've, I've, done, never been to the I've done some endurance events at Battery Park, and here I am getting absolutely like beaten up with her in the background, which is nice. And my family, we went down to Hudson. Okay. You know, we're going through and looking at it. I mean, it's quite an experience. So, you know, again, we're talking about the streets paved with gold. Um, this was some a quote that an Italian immigrant came up with. He says, "Well, I came to America because I heard the streets were paved with gold. When I got here, I found out three things. One." Streets weren't paved with gold. Two, they weren't paved at all. And third, I was expected to pave them. Um, again, and sweep them and right. build everything. When we, when we talk about you know rumors getting across the ocean to other people, this is the the perception they had. But you know he was able to get a job, I guess, out of this. Now we'll go over this briefly because we have a separate clip of it, but it kind of uh, gets us into what we're getting into today. This was in uh, Puck magazine. Puck letter P up there every time. It was, does that uh, say? No, it does not. The cartoonist was actually an immigrant himself. This was actually a magazine, um, mostly satire. So what you can see here is the in the foreground is an immigrant coming in. Um, a lot of uh, disheveled, tattered clothing. Um, patch right there. He's on the gang plank. He's on the gang plank. You know, coming off the boat. Right. Um, this dude's like, nope, we don't want you. Right. You know, these are your, your Americans, your native... Af- I find it ironic they call themselves natives. Right. You know, but these were your Native Americans in their eyes, the ones who were born here. Go ahead. Up, yeah, and body language is going to tell you all. Yeah. You know, rich guys, the shadows behind them. Mr. He did a great breakdown of this political cartoon, so we're really not going to go much into a it A united now. defensive front here. Yeah. And, and it's kind of hypocritical because these guys, I, just about most people in the United States can trace their roots to their ancestors of somebody who eventually came here yeah. from somewhere. Unless you're Cherokee, Iroquois, right. Choctaw, Chickasaw, really yeah. don't, then you really were not a native of this continent. So, some words that are associated with this. Ah, woo! Acculturation, assimilate, or cause to assimilate a different culture, typically the dominate one. Um, that's what we're talking about, what's going to happen with a lot of these immigrants. A process. It doesn't happen quickly because a lot of them wind up settling in their own neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. Um, ethnocentric, all right? That would be what these guys are. Yeah. Uh, they're feeling their background is superior to others. And I like to break down into really two root words, ethno, ethnicity. ethnicity. Centric is the center. It's the belief that your ethnicity, your way of life, your culture is the center of the world, is better than everybody else's. And here's, here's I love how this sounds, but I hate the meaning because it almost sounds like a, a science type of word, xenophobia. Yeah. Xenophobia. So if we're looking at phobia, you're afraid of something, and I can't even believe this is actually a word. Um, this is your intense or irrational dislike or fear of people from other countries. That is actually a word. This is one of these words that you know we should be f- ashamed exist. And really, it's like I, in my class I say like if you're in a room where somebody's speaking another language and that makes you feel uncomfortable, right? You're being a little bit xenophobic, yeah, because you're assuming they're talking about you when they're probably not. It's not all about you. Yeah, so that that that's like a, a little bit of fear or dislike of people. You know, so there's acculturation too. You know, this is where, like, you move into a society, you now have to become part of that society while still trying to hold on yeah. to some of your, your ways. And, you know, I'll embarrass myself here. Sure. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm part Polish, if you couldn't tell. Um, but every birthday, my family sings a song called Stolatz, okay. which is the Polish version of Happy Birthday. Oh. It doesn't translate into Happy Birthday. It translates into May You Live 100 Years and stuff like that. I like that better. So, yeah. <laughs> but but it's, it's well, unless you're 99. Right, right, right. right, right. <laughs> That's kind of not nice. They're going to die next year. Anyway, so when, when and Vladislav and Ludwiga Karwa, 
Okay. My great grandparents, when they emigrated to the United States around 1893, again, this was during my ancestors, sure. they acculturated. They learned to speak English. They, they, they became American citizens, but they held on to some of that Polish. So every birthday in their family, and then my grandparents' families, and then my mother growing up, and then now us, we sing happy birthday, and then we sing Stolatz. And it's really funny when, I, when like friends come to the house on a birthday, or like You're experiencing this for the first, for the first time. time. They're like, happy birthday to, yeah, you were like, stall lot, stall lot, oh, yeah, wow. yeah, and they're like, what is what going, is going on? on here? But I, that's acculturation. I, I love that stuff yeah. too, I really do. Uh, I know uh, people from Italian backgrounds with the uh, Christmas Eve, there's the fish, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's one of those things. And those are great, so like, when we're talking about that fear though, um, you know, this was it. There was a dislike to them because they were different, but then there's the, the fear that they're taking jobs, they're bringing in diseases. Um, crime. Crime, um, all of these things. Um, these are also, when we're looking back here, these would be considered your nativists. Yeah. Another vocabulary word for this one. Whoop, there we go. There is. Nativists, uh, people wanted to limit immigration. You're gonna see that, you know, the, the fear and the wanting to keep uh, people out of the United States is gonna actually lead to legislation that in fact does that. And I said, ironically enough, they, they actually refer to themselves as the Native Americans. I know. It's just like idiots. Yeah. Um, now, oh, I bring poor this up. Rudolph. I bring this up because, you know, these immigrants who were coming into the United States, and again, you know, when you're looking at why people, um, it's probably human nature, you know, if there is something different it is easy, it's easy to ridicule it, ridicule it, make fun of it, point and laugh rather than embrace accept. it or accept like it. Like if you've watched Cobra Kai, the way Johnny makes fun of those kids in the in the dojo. Wow. You know, he's making fun of the kids. Karate yeah. kid stuff. Bring it, bring it in. You know, so it's like, here's, ready? Yep. Dasher and Dancer, Prancer oh, and Vixen, wow. Comet and Cupid, Donner, and there's little Rudolph coming off the boat who just happens to be a little bit different. But he saves the day at the end of the day. And they wouldn't let him join in other reindeer games. And if it wasn't for him, kids wouldn't have gotten their toys. And uh, Herbie so wants to be a dentist. Wasn't Dumbo, the, the elephant with the big ears, wasn't he picked on as well? I can't believe you brought that up. Why? That was my nickname in school elementary school. I wasn't going to say. Because I had really big ears. Oh. Yeah. They called me Dumbo. You know, again, too, uh, uh, he's bringing up like elementary school and middle school, right? And you're talking about kids picking on thing, picking on other kids that are different. And the thing is, is that we have grown men doing, who, the, same thing. doing the same exact Acting thing. Acting like kindergartners. Who probably went home and told their kids, you know, don't do that, but awful, awful. When it came to adapting to American life, um, one of the things I could say is that when they were getting off the boat, very similar to students going into the cafeteria, where are you gonna go and sit? With your buddies. Mm -hmm. um, so what neighborhoods are you gonna go to? The neighborhoods you're more familiar with. So if you've ever been to New York City and you've been to Chinatown, Little Italy, Hell's Kitchen, which was an Irish neighborhood, that's what happened. Yep. Um, Spanish all these, Harlem. Right. You know when you're when you're coming off the boat and you're experiencing some, some adversity with people who don't want you there, you're not familiar with the language or the customs. You're going to go where you're most familiar. So immigrants settled in their own neighborhoods. Um, you would often see people speaking in their own language. Um, you can kind of see this today when it comes to going into certain neighborhoods. Um, if you're going into a local deli or a newsstand, they may have that particular newspaper in a different language okay. that represents the people in that particular community. Um, I know when I was in downtown Brooklyn, you'd go there, the ambulances were in Hebrew because that was a predominantly Jewish neighborhood, and so were the newspapers. There's special holidays. I was actually just in Little Italy a couple weeks ago right. on the Feast of San Gennaro. Oh, and it place. was like, you know, this tiny little street in New York City, that's basically Mulberry Street now, and that's all Little Italy has become, is just Mulberry Street, and it was like this huge party. And when I'm on my way home, there's this place in Riverhead, uh, you know, caters to a Spanish-speaking population, mm -hmm. you get the best rice, beans, chicken, I'm sorry, pollo, if I even pronounce that correctly. All right, that's like, and of course, it's like one of those like nice little kept secrets, and it's in a different section of town, mm -hmm. it's, it's great stuff. What's one of the things that's going to keep people together? You could say that goes, uh, you know, that could hold true today, is that religion's going to stand at the center of that. There's some more differences. Oh, big one, cultural diffusion. Here we go. The blending together. You of want the cartoons? Cultures. Yeah. 
You and know? this is, you know, if you look at watching prior video clips, when we're talking about the United States of America and American Sign Language, this is where it comes from. Yeah, if you've eaten Mexican food, if you've eaten Italian food, if you've eaten, you know, hamburgers and hot dogs, which were really German, right? you know, you are a result of cultural diffusion. So, awesome. I love it. Salad bowl. We actually got to get going because our students are about to come in right now. Thanks so for watching. So stay safe and...